you've made your way to a new edition of CNN Student News. Thank you for spending part of your Wednesday with us. I'm Carl Azus. First up, the presidential election shifts from a marathon to a sprint as the race enters its last lap. With November 4th, Election Day, quickly approaching, we're taking a trip to the campaign trail to hear from Senators John McCain and Barack Obama. The next president won't have time to get used to the office. We face many challenges here at home, you know that, and many enemies abroad in this dangerous world. Now this weekend, as Lindsay mentioned, Senator Biden guaranteed that if Senator Obama is elected, we will have an international crisis to test America's new president. We don't want a president who invites testing from the world. Senator McCain speaking during an event in Pennsylvania yesterday. McCain's campaign is called a victory in that state critical. During his remarks, the Arizona senator hammered his opponent on the economy. He said, quote, Senator Obama is more interested in controlling who gets your piece of the pie than he is in growing the pie. Make no mistake about it. After eight years of Bush-McCain economics, the pie is shrinking. It's not growing. That means lower wages and declining incomes, plummeting home values, rising unemployment. So we've seen what happens with their policies. They're, we've had an eight-year experiment. We see where it leads. This, this economic crisis is the final verdict on that failed leadership. It is try, time to try something new. The economy, obviously a big focus for Senator Obama yesterday as well. During campaigning in Florida, the Illinois senator took a shot at his Republican rival, saying that Senator McCain has, quote, failed to fully acknowledge the impact of the current financial crisis. Later this week, Senator Obama will be taking some time off from the campaign trail to visit with his ailing grandmother. Is this legit? The U.S. House of Representatives includes a member from Puerto Rico. This one's true. Puerto Rico, which became a U.S. territory in 1898, elects a resident commissioner to serve in the House of Representatives, but he does not get a vote in the full House. That commissioner's seat is up for election next month, as are pretty much all the seats in the U.S. House of Representatives. Now, you've seen the race for the White House dominate news coverage, but when voters head to the polls, they're going to be casting their ballots on hundreds of other contests around the country. Here's what's at stake when they do. Ladies and gentlemen, put up your dukes. You know the main event that takes place every four years, but every two years, there's another series of contests, the clash for congressional control. Here's the tale of the tape. In this corner, weighing in with 435 voting members, the U.S. House of Representatives. Right now, the fighters in blue have the advantage. Democrats currently outnumber Republicans 239 to 200. That's more than 435 total because some delegates, like those from D.C. and Guam, don't get a vote. In the House, members' terms are only two years, so they'll be fighting for all of their seats this November. Over to the other corner, with 100 members, I give you the U.S. Senate. Neither blue nor red holds a clear majority here, as there are 49 Democrats and 49 Republicans currently serving. The Democrats carry a little more punch, though, because there are two independents who vote with them. Senators serve six-year terms, and 35 of their seats are in the ring this round. So what does it matter who wins these contests? Aren't the presidential candidates the heavyweight contenders? Yes, but the majority party in Congress has the upper hand over what laws are passed. What gets done about the economy? What happens in Iraq and Afghanistan? Who pays what in taxes? All of this is determined by congressional champs as well as the White House winner. And if Congress and the presidency are controlled by different parties as they are now, well, that may spell some sparring. But that is what keeps our democracy in shape. This week, congressional contests. Next week, the issues, as we examine the positions of the presidential candidates. It's all part of our Talking Democracy series. All year long, we've been breaking down political issues on our show and online with videos and teaching tools. The countdown to the election is almost over. These free resources are still available at cnnstudentnews.com. Time for the shout out. Which of the following animals is a herbivore? Is it a penguin, whale, frog, or elephant? 
You've got three seconds. Go. A herbivore only eats plants, which eliminates every option here except the elephant. That's your answer, and that's your shout out. Okay, human herbivores, of course, are called vegetarians. Many folks, maybe even some of you guys, choose not to eat meat. There's a wide variety of veggie foods available. Well, there's one school district in Georgia that's serving up some of these meatless menu items, and you might be surprised at how students are responding. Dr. Sanjay Gupta dishes out the details. Tofu dogs, black bean burgers, soy chicken patties. Not a typical diet for most teens, but at Burkmar Middle School in Milburn, Georgia, the kids don't seem to care. Um, I like the vegetarian chicken nuggets and um, the vegetarian corn dogs here. I eat the grilled cheese sandwiches and apples and sometimes I'll eat the veggie burger. Burkmar is just one of Gwinnett County schools that offers vegetarian options in the lunch line. And the kids are voting vegetarian at a surprising rate. You know, it's estimated that about 3% of teens are vegetarians, um, which is around 5,000 students for us. Now, some of the kids eat vegetarian for religious reasons, but many of these 10 to 12-year-olds say they choose it for health reasons. We went to the doctor. I was 10 pounds overweight. Since the doctor said that that could be more a, a faster way, so I, when I grow up, I could die faster. So my mom didn't like this, so she started making more healthy food, and they actually made me lose those 10 pounds because I want to stay healthy and have a healthy life. All in all, Gwinnett County Schools have served close to 500,000 vegetarian meals in this last year alone. And Karen Crawford hopes the habits they learn now will stay with them for a lifetime. We know that. Uh, nutrition profoundly affects, you know, how, how kids, their ability to learn and grow and maintain a healthy lifestyle. And it's important to teach them these lessons when they're young. Dr. Sanjay Gupta, CNN, reporting. All right, it's more of a scary holiday than a scary thought. Halloween, just around the corner. Maybe you're putting together a killer costume. Maybe you're going with the standard ghostly get-up. One sheet, two holes, no creativity. But as Boyd Hooper of affiliate KARE in St. Paul, Minnesota tells us, in an election year, many masqueraders draw inspiration for their costumes from the presidential campaign. Reagan was just here. Campaign commercials not frighten you enough? Jim Berg has just the ticket. Oh, we have George W. and Laura. They make a nice couple, don't they? 22 years running Twin Cities Magic and Costume has given Jim some political perspective. You have Al Gore in the beginning and Al Gore with more of his global warming tan. In an election year, up your order. John Kerry and Ross Perot. Politics has a face and people want it. The first political candidates available commonly in a mass was JFK. For some reason, LBJ didn't quite make it, uh, but Nixon has been one of the biggest sellers of all time. So much so, Jim's waiting on a new Nixon shipment. And everybody likes to do this. For the first time in Jim's store, Hillary is outselling Bill this year, which brings us to the main attraction. Who's ever mass sells more is typically the one that's elected. And? And they're neck and neck. <laughs> there is one mask Jim would love to have in stock. Sarah Palin was a late announcement. His suppliers weren't quite ready, and Jim has had to make do. There we go. This, this would be Sarah's hair. He'd show us those Sarah Palin glasses, too. But for the fact, two weeks till Halloween, he sold out two dozen pair. And sticking with the Halloween theme, I used to, okay, I still get called a pumpkin head, but I didn't think this is what they meant. This commemorative carving is the very impressive work of an eye reporter. I got to say, it's a little surreal to see my face on a fruit or to consider this illuminating image greeting trick-or-treaters from somebody's porch. But who can deny this kind of support for our show, especially when it's given by a gourd? So the big question, can you top it? Head to CNNStudentNews.com, send us your creative carvings. We're excited, and I'm a little nervous to see what you come up with. That will wrap up all of this Pumpkinheads FaceTime for now. You guys have a great day.